Uh, you know, our emphasis is you don't want to have to work on it twice. Let's offer you guys everything you need to do this install with confidence and not have to work on it twice. Hey everyone, it's Ryan at GPI. Today I want to talk to you about our LS3 camshaft package. We get a lot of questions about the kit components, the options, and I know it can sometimes be confusing. I want to describe the parts in a little bit more detail go over things with you to let you know kind of our recommendations for your type of build, for what your, uh, your goals are with your setup. Guys, I want you to understand that we didn't uh, come up with all these options to make it difficult. We came up with it to have the most complete and comprehensive kit available for you because the most frustrating thing I've ever experienced when working on vehicles is I get to the house, I go to work on the car, and then I, I don't have something. Oh, I've got to go back to the parts store and get something else. And there's nothing more frustrating than that. We always strive to have the most complete kit where all you have to do is add fluids or at least give you the option for that. So also understand sometimes our initial price point looks like we're a little higher than some of our competitors sometimes, uh, sometimes not. But you got to understand it's because our base kit includes more than most other people's base kit. And, um, I'll go over this here in a little bit more detail, but options one through five, the cam all the way through the timing gear, uh, are basically required components for most setups. So those pretty much are, are what comprises the default pricing. And then everything else is optional, and that's on you. So let's get it going. Let's, let's talk about it a little bit. Number one, camshaft option. You know, this is for uh, covers. You know, we have options for our NA stuff, stage one through four, PD blower stuff. We have turbo cams. There's options for that in our camshaft drop down. You select the cam you want for your application. We have some uh, descriptions on the camshafts that will kind of tell you in a little bit more detail what the power ranges are, what the recommended converter components and, and additional surrounding mods are gonna be for those camshafts. Once you've selected your camshaft, you're gonna drop down to number two. Number two is gonna be your valve spring kit. The valve springs most people are going to use if you're staying, you know, stub, you know, around 7,000, maybe sub 7,000 RPM, it's going to be the 660 spring kit, uh, which comes in either steel or titanium retainer options. And it's optional to get it with 505 locators, which is for stock valve guides in stock heads. Or if you have aftermarket heads that have larger bronze guides, that's going to be the 565 locators. Also, we have the option for our 700 thousandths lift spring kit, which is our high RPM spring kit that we use. It has a higher spring rate, um, a little bit more seat pressure, but a lot more open pressure. And we also recommend uh, shimming these things to about 60 from coil bind. So you really need to check that stuff to have it really dialed in on your setup. Moving along, number three, push rods. Not only will you see varying lengths, which you will need to measure in most cases to make sure you have the right push rod, we can obviously recommend on a stock engine, we know a 7400 or a 7425 rod is going to be the right length for setups with stock gaskets and, and unmilled heads. But when you go and throw in aftermarket heads, milling, thinner gaskets, you've got to start measuring that stuff just to be... Uh, on kill to make sure you're getting the right length for your application and for the lifter you're using, especially if you're using a short travel lifter. But also in the push rod selection, we have uh, our GPI push rods, which are one piece, chromoly, 80 thousandths wall, 5 sixteenths diameter, and the Manton three piece, which is a little nicer push rod, a little bit more expensive, but it is three piece, 83 thou wall thickness, it's also 5 sixteenths diameter. Some people opt for those. Both will work for most applications. Carrying along, cam bolts. Uh, we only offer the ARP cam bolts in our cam install kit. Uh, they end up being cheaper, I believe, than the OEM bolts. And you know we have uh, a lot of faith in ARP hardware, obviously, because we use it on everything. Number five is gonna be our timing gear. Most LS3, LSA, and, and newer, you know, setups came with a single bolt cam gear and we're using three bolt cam cores. So um, this is a three bolt gear, uh, four pole for 58X Reluctor, which is going to be for all your Gen 4 style LS engines. 
uh, not limited to LS3, it could be LSA, it could be LS9, etc., etc. Number six is going to be lifters. I left two options off because I'm kind of giving you recommendations based on how we would do things on our shop builds in the shop. Uh, LS7 and the, uh, the cam motion lifters, we typically don't do on the installs, and I'll tell you why. Those lifters are good OEM replacement lifters, but they're not really intended for high spring rate, high RPM applications. So sometimes people select those lifter options and I wouldn't recommend those personally. Uh, we use the GMPP race, which is the Chevy racing lifter uh, or the Johnson lifters. That's what we, that's our go-tos. Johnson would be the short travels we would use for ultra high RPM applications. Again, careful measuring with your push rods um, will be uh, certainly required because it is a short travel lifter. The GMPP race is not a short travel lifter, but it also works good, you know, up to 8,000, a little over 8,000 RPM is what we've done with that uh, lifter as well. And uh, for checking this stuff also in our push rod uh, drop down, I'm 99.9% .9 sure we have a push rod checking tool that's available for you guys to purchase as well. So you don't have to have any questions. You can check it and know with confidence. Number seven, head gaskets. Um, we basically offer three uh, brands. There will be multiple thickness selections you can select in that. Anything from stock 51 down to 40 thousandths usually, or maybe 39 thousandths for the SEEs. But it's going to be OEM gaskets, uh, OEM LS3s, OEM LS9 gaskets, you know, with the LS9 being a seven layer, where the uh, LS3 is a five layer, I believe. I believe. Um, having a moment. Uh, the SEEs and also uh, the Kometics. Uh, Kometics we use a lot of, SEEs we use a fair amount of as well. Number eight, cylinder head hardware, head bolts and studs. As you know, the GM bolts are throwaways. So once you remove them to pull the heads off to do your lifters, you're going to need some new hardware. We offer OEM replacements, which are again torque to yield bolts. They're one time use. So you know, a year from now when you decide to do your ported heads because you didn't want to right now and you have to pull the heads back off, you're going to have to buy hardware again. Uh, or you can get ARP hardware and you will not have to do that. ARP bolts, um, a fair amount of people buy those, or ARP studs. Uh, both work well in most scenarios. We certainly recommend the studs on the power adder applications because they tend to offer a little bit better clamp or at least that's a belief, that's what we've seen, that's what we've been taught along the way, right? But one, I got, one thing I can tell you that is a benefit of the studs is it is not as rough on the threads and the block when you're torquing them because you screw the stud in, then you're putting the nut on the stud. So the stud's not trying to rip the threads out as it's turning into the block while you're torquing. So, you know, the studs aren't gonna be for everyone, but that's one reason we like studs, and that's my story there. So. Here we go, number nine, valve cover gaskets. It's an option. You know, if you have a low mileage engine, maybe you don't need new gaskets. Maybe you don't want to replace the gaskets. They're rubber, and unless they're damaged, you don't really have to, but if you want to have that extra peace of mind that, hey, uh, I'm not gonna have a leak after I get this thing all together, maybe you want to buy a new set of gaskets, and there you go, we offer that for you. Higher mileage stuff, I certainly would do that because the rubber tends to uh, dry up and get a little bit more brittle after time, you know, a lot of heat cycles, so. It's cheap insurance. We recommend getting gaskets and uh, replacing them while you're there. Much the same with the next part, number 10, the cam retainer plate. And most people will think, well, that's just a retainer plate for the camshaft, why would you replace it? Well, because it has a, uh, an embedded O-ring seal in the plate that seals up the main oil galley up there in the lifter tunnels. So over time with heat cycles, that seal, that little rubber bead, is obviously it's going to wear. And I don't mean that it's going to wear away, but what happens is on a higher mileage deal, you can take those off and you can run your finger across there and you a lot of times barely can feel any change in height. You know, the, the, the seal is not really raised that much. It's been flattened out and mushed over time. And we like to put a new cam retainer plate on there to ensure we're not going to have any oil leakage or hemorrhages at a main oil supply area 
Uh, that's not fun to have to go back in and fix that after the fact. Number 11, cam retainer plate bolts. Self-explanatory, it's the four bolts for the retainer plate. Why do we offer that as an option? Because if you've ever taken an LS apart, you know the probability is high that if someone's worked on it before you or even some of the OE ones, you're probably going to have to use a bolt extractor sometimes. Sometimes those things get rounded out when you take them apart. They're a little Torx head and oftentimes, sometimes, yeah, they get put in with too much torque or they're just difficult to get out because they're a tapered seat, uh, a tapered head, and they you know, kind of bite into that plate a little bit when they're put in there. So cam retainer plate bolts we recommend getting because more than likely than not, you're, you're going to need to replace them anyways. Number 12, crank bolt, the balancer bolt. Three options we offer there, OEM, ARP, and the Earls. Basically, the OEM is a throwaway. All of GM's Tortillo bolts are throwaways, one-time use. The ARP and the Earls will both give you uh, multiple uses, and you don't have to use torque angle to torque those things. They just torque to X amount of foot-pounds. Timing cover seal, we offer a couple options there, OEM or the Fast Fish. The Fast Fish is what we use in our higher performance applications, especially setups that may be using a vacuum pump. It's a Teflon coated seal and it will stay sealed up with higher amounts of vacuum on the crankcase than an OEM seal will. Really no benefit or not as much benefit when you use it without a vacuum pump other than it is a little less drag. We actually tested the drag with the OEM seals versus the fast fish seals and the fast fish being coated is a little bit less drag just spinning the engine. Again, it's not going to be for everyone, but it's a nice upgrade that we offer while you're in there doing it. 14, water pump gaskets. You know, maybe you don't tear yours up when you take them apart. Maybe you do. They're pretty cheap, uh, unless you have an LS7. I think those are pretty expensive now. But yeah, we offer the option for water pump gaskets. You know, they're, they're a, kind of a, a metal gasket, but they have the, the rubber seal that will stick to the block when you pull it apart and it'll bend the metal and it'll tear apart. Uh, just buy some gaskets and put them on there. You don't wanna have to work on this thing twice. Lifter trays, may or may not need them. If you got an LS3, you may not need them. If it's a higher mileage, the trays could have a little bit of wear on the flats where they hold the lifter. That's really up to your discretion, but they're pretty cheap, to be honest with you. And while you're in there, uh, you know, our emphasis is you don't want to have to work on it twice. Let's offer you guys everything you need to do this install with confidence and not have to work on it twice. Time and cover gasket, which is your front cover gasket. Sometimes, like I said, lower mileage stuff, you may get away with reusing it if you absolutely have to. We recommend you replace the gasket. Time and chain damper. On the LS3s, as you know, it uses a little spring-loaded side damper. If you want the little dog bone looking damper, uh, we offer that in here. It will require the oil pump to be removed to replace that, so it adds some time into your cam swap. It would be additional labor if you're paying a shop to do this stuff but the, the spring-loaded uh, dampers are known to break over time and end up in the oil pan. Most people never know that that's even happened until they take it apart for a cam swap, but we recommend the little dog bone in any performance application that's gonna be spending a little bit of RPM and, and getting after it. Which leads us to the next thing is number 18, our timing chain. If you're going in there and you're going that deep, if you have higher miles, timing chain replacement would be recommended uh, we offer OEM chain or the C5R. C5R is our go-to chain on our performance engines uh, that we build, our, our race engines. We run big solid roller stuff, you know, 9,000 RPM with C5R chains. They've been great for us and that, that's what we recommend. That's the two chains we recommend. You know, if you're staying on the, the smaller stage one, 6,500 RPM, I just want it to sound cool and make a little bit more power, maybe an OEM chain is fine for you. But if you're serious about things and you wanna go out, win some races, and you're gonna push your car hard, we recommend the C5R. 19, trunnion upgrades. We offer the Smith Brothers, the CHE, and the Mantons. Um, the main difference between the three is the Smith Brothers press the bronze bushing presses into the rocker arm body. The CHE and the Mantons are full floating. They float, they just, you just basically push them in there and then the trunnion shaft floats on them. So they're more of a full floating style. 
We probably do more of the CHEs than any, but we offer all three for you guys because we know, you know, some of you guys may prefer the Smith Brothers. Maybe you've had great success with them in the past, as we have. And the Manton stuff is good quality as well. So just some options, different, different flavors there for you guys on the Trunnion upgrades. But we do recommend the Trunnion upgrades because the factory needle bearings in the rocker arms are very, very prone to spilling their guts all in your engine, which is not cool because then you get your oil pump pickup tube clogged up and guess what? You lose oil pressure and you lose more than that. You know, you starve the engine for oil and of course bad things start to happen. But emphasis on, you know, OEMs, yeah, they can get high mileage without trunnion upgrades. Sometimes the factory engines have trunnions come apart on the rockers, but you gotta understand, we're doing all of this stuff. We're probably going out and racing, we're making pulls, we're you know, racing in Mexico, we're we're going to the track, we're doing whatever we're doing for racing, we're, we're uh, auto crossing, we're road racing, we're drifting, whatever we're doing, it, you know, you're making your setup more aggressive, it's going to work the valve train harder, Just spend the money on, on the trunnion upgrades and, and uh, save yourself some, some time and pain. And last but not least, tuning services. Would it be complete without our tuning services? I think not. Um, we offer tuning services obviously remotely. And in-house, remotely, we limit our tuning services to naturally aspirated setups at the current moment. In-house, we get down with everything. So it, it doesn't matter, power adder, double power adder, triple power adder, it doesn't matter. You stack it on, we'll tune it. And that's it. Hopefully this video is informational for you guys and it helps explain a little bit more about our package, why it's as complex as it is. Ultimately, it's for your greater benefit to have the most complete package. When it's the weekend and it's time to crack open some beer and work on your car, you have all the parts there the first time around and you don't have to make another trip. So thanks guys. We'll catch you next time.